I'm going to send it over now to the Celtics PA, Eddie Palladino. As we welcome Mike Gorman and his family on court, along with Celtics ownership, executives from the Boston Celtics and NBC Sports Boston, and the Heinsohn family. Today, we celebrate a Hall of Fame career and honor Mike Gorman in his final regular season game as the voice of the Boston Celtics. Mike Gorman has served as the Celtics play-by-play -play announcer since 1981, and along with the late great Tommy Heinsohn, made up TV's longest running telecast duo. With his signature, got it, and his unique play-by-play -play style, Mike Gorman has called some of the most memorable moments in Celtic franchise history throughout his 43-year broadcast career. He has earned national and international recognition, including a distinguished spot at the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. And now we invite Mike Gorman, Celtics co-owners Rick Grosbeck and Steve Paliuka, along with Bill Bridgden, president and group leader of NBC Sports Regional Networks, over to the NBC Sports Boston broadcast table for a very special courtside dedication. And now, Celtics co-owner Steve Paliuka would like to say a few words. Steve? Welcome everyone to this incredible ceremony for Mike Gorman. We love you, Mike! We do love Mike. I... We asked the players, the coaches, the fans for words that describe Mike. What were the first words that came in? There were thousands, but the most words started with, first of all, family. The Celtics embody family. In fact, Wick was one who said family, and this has been a great family for our 23 years and for, the, for, for, for your 43 years. Incredible. Um, you know, Wick, Rich, Bill, Sully, all, all, all the fans here. Uh, we, we just really appreciate you being part of that family. Scal, you getting me? The, the, second, the second word that people used, the second word that people used was legend. Mike's a legend. He's earned that in all these years. The third word, which is very appropriate, is kind. Mike's the kindest person in the organization, will help anybody at any time. And finally, finally, before I ask the fans to join me in a chant, the last word was the voice. And that's the voice that will be remembered forever. Uh, all those incredible calls for 43 years. And I'd like you to, to finish, I'd like the fans that on three to all say, follow me and say, got it. One, two, three. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Thank you so much. It's fantastic. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Wick. And thanks, Bill. As a thank you, the Celtics are gifting Mike a Rolex watch, a custom-framed Mike Gorman championship banner, and a commemorative shadow box with a piece of the Garden Parquet. Scalabrini to center court. Take it away, Scal. I love this guy. Love this guy. How about this, huh? This is amazing. All day has been amazing. You guys have been just great. And thank you to the ownership for doing this. The, the, the stuff that Mike has experienced so far has been just 
Second to none. Now you get a chance to talk. <laughs> yeah. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, so as you guys know, Mike grew up in Dorchester and just like, talk us through the journey from growing up loving basketball and having this job and doing this for 43 years for your favorite basketball team. Well, I think it's probably a lot of fathers will identify with this. Um, you, if you have a son, when he gets to about eight years old anywhere in New England here, he has one or two choices. He can go play basketball or he can go be a hockey player. You couldn't do both. Um, so because I couldn't skate, I immediately went and be, tried to become a basketball player. And I wasn't all that good at that either. But what it did was it, it lit a fire inside me about a team we had here in Boston at the time who went out and they won world championships every single year. And I'd find those games, sometimes you had to go late at night at 11.30 to find a championship game, but you could find it if you wanted. And through the years, I just became more and more a Celtic fan as time went by. I never thought I would end up here, that's for sure. Um, but thank you. But uh, I have, and it's, uh, again, it's that one decision you made when you were about 12 years old. You decided, okay, uh, and I, um, I actually had a promising career until I discovered I had no left hand, and then it, it went downhill. From <laughs> Happens to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, obviously you've spent so many years working with Tommy. First of all, how did you meet Tommy, and then how did this thing all start, and what was it like working with him? I'm at Channel 12 down in Providence, and we somehow inherited three Providence college games that we could do. So I'm at this meeting, and I said, I'll do the games, because nobody at the station knew about it could do a game. And they said, well, we'll go find some ex-Providence college guy to do the color. And I said, why don't we try to get Tommy Heinsohn to do the color? And they said, ah, Tommy's not going to want to come down to Rhode Island to do some foolish game down here. I said, well, how do we know unless we try? And here's where this becomes a different time. I call a 411 information in Boston and ask the number of the Boston Celtics. I get it. I call the Boston Celtics. This lady answers the phone. She says, Boston Celtics. I said, yeah, Tom Heinsohn, please. And she goes, Gee, you know, Tommy just left, but I'll give you his home phone, because I know he's headed for home. <laughs> <laughs> that never happened then. So um, I called Tommy, and I make a proposal to him. I say, we'd like to have you do color. And he says, uh, why don't we have lunch? We should talk this over with lunch. He said, where are you calling from? And I said, Providence, Rhode Island. And he said, uh, OK. And he gives me the name of a place that's about three minutes from Tom's house, and it's about 50 miles from where I live. <laughs> um, so I show up. We have lunch to make it short. Um, he takes a look at the contract I had, and it had the per-game fee. He crossed that out and doubled it and put another number on top, looked at me and said, Mike, how's your health insurance looking situation now? <laughs> and so an hour later, I walk out of that restaurant with a signed contract from Tommy Heinsohn for twice the money we want to offer him and a $10,000 life insurance policy. <laughs> he was always selling, right? He was always closing. He was always closing. Him. <laughs> but, that opened the door for me and introduced me to just a remarkable personality. Um, I will get misty if I try to talk about Tom. I think of him every day. Um, I just... Thank you, whoever that was up there. But, I mean, right down to people say, how'd you develop your style as a broadcaster? And many of you have heard this story before, but believe me, it's true. And Dick Leip, who has been a lifeline for me forever, uh, can back me up on this. But um, I walked into the old pontoon that was in front of uh, the old hanging off the first balcony, the old Boston Garden. And I walk in and, and I get my notes spread out in front of me and I got, I got the color coded as to who scored this and who did that. And Chuck Person, I remember, was the opposition on the other side. It holds the notes about him. And I've got them all spread out. And then Tommy walks in and he's got a cigarette going. And he goes, what's all this blank? And I said, uh, those are my notes. And he said, not anymore. And he reaches down and he covers him up with a little ball and throws him off the balcony. You know? <laughs> and I'm, I'm looking at this guy. I'm like, what the? You know? um, and he looked me right in the eye and he said, we don't need notes. We're going to talk about what we see out there. And that's what you did. You know, we did for 39 years. Most memorable call. A memorable moment. I know they're different. Memorable call has to be the Eastern Conference Finals for, um, after the Celtics had just had the ball go in. I think it was off Larry Bourne's leg. 
and there was only one, two seconds left in the game, and they were obviously going to lose. All Isaiah had to do was get the ball in bounds, and he threw it in, and Bird. If you watch the tape, it's remarkable, because Larry was moving before Isaiah actually threw the ball in. He had made a guess and said, it's going to go here. I'm going to be there first. He was. He deflected it to Dennis Johnson, who laid it in on the cut, and Celtics ended up winning the game. That call gets played everywhere. And I have to thank a guy named Jeff Grice, who was uh, the guy who puts together all our uh, video stuff, because after the play, when the play actually happened, I said, and a foul. And there was no foul. And Jeff just a little raised the blade to the tape right there, and all of a sudden the foul was gone. And um, yeah, that's my favorite call. The other one, I don't know if we want to get into that other one, do we? No. No. What about when Pierce hit that shot in Harrington's face? No, no. Buried it. <laughs> Paul likes that, Jeff. Oh, I like <laughs> he really that does. too. Well, Mike, I know how much all these people mean to you. Is there any last words you want to give to all the people? Yeah. Um, you know the song from Cheers where they say you want to go where everybody knows your name? Um, that's what made the TD Garden for me. It's a place I could go where everybody knew my name and the relationship I've been able to develop with everybody who works in this building, not opposing teams, but everybody who works in this building has just been, that's the biggest part of it for me because um, just to have, to see all the guys as I walk in, see Jimmy and Jackie from security and I could go on and on with all the guys. Um, it's just been wonderful. So I'll say that and, and to the team, I just want to say, Go, go in this thing, will you please? Just go in it. Celtics fans, let's hear it one more time for the voice of the Boston Celtics, Mike Gorman.